Here in my hand, I hold something that can unlock a precious resource, something that I always seem to be lacking, and it's not like some raw material like gold or bronze or silicon or something like that. It's not even like PC hardware, which can sometimes be in short supply. It's not even graphics cards. They're finally coming back in stock, so that's good news all around. No, the resource that I'm talking about and what I'm hoping this device in my hand can provide me more of is time. Excellent. So what is this mysterious product? That's right, it's an SD card. And before you're like, Paul, I use SD cards all the time, there's nothing really that special about them. Let me explain why this SD card in particular piqued my interest when I first heard about it, to the point where I reached out to Lexar and said, hey, could you send a few of those over? I really think they will help save me some time. Let's start out with a little bit of a story and an example of the SD cards that I've been using. These are 256 gig SD cards that I've been using for a few years now. Since we shoot in 4K, usually after a day of shooting, we'll end up with maybe 80 to up to 100 20 gigs worth of footage uh, for a single camera. Sometimes that doubles up to two cameras for some projects, like if I'm shooting a build video, for example, where we've got multiple cameras going at the same time. So the cards I've been using for quite some time are this SanDisk Extreme SDXC card, 256 gig capacity, and rated for 90 megabytes per second reads. Uh, this Samsung um, SD card is pretty similar. It's just a micro SD card with an adapter, but this is a Samsung Evo Select, which has very similar specs to the SanDisk Extreme. This one goes up to 100 megabytes per second reads and 90 megabytes per second writes according to the spec sheet. And these cards are just fine for shooting 4K footage even at higher data rates. It's just that when they fill up with 80 or 100 gigs plus worth of footage, it means I have to copy all of that off of these onto something else to give the footage to Joe or to copy it onto a different editing system in order to load it up into Adobe Premiere or whatever editing software you're using and actually edit the footage. Now there is a newer standard for SD cards cards that's rated for higher capacities and higher transfer speeds, and that is UHS-2, or Ultra High Speed 2, and there is actually a physical difference on the back of the cards where they're the little gold contacts, if you look at them side by side, UHS-2 cards have an additional eight contact points back there, and I'll post an article in the video description if you want to read some of the technical differences between the older standard and the newer one. By modifying the standard as they have, though, they've allowed a couple things to happen. One is that these are still backwards compatible with existing SD card readers you can plug them in and copy off of them, but you'll be limited likely to the same speeds as the older non-UHS2 cards. And that was one of the first things I learned when I got these new cards and I wanted to test them out, which I have been doing for the past couple weeks. I just plugged it into my existing uh, SD card reader, which is USB 3.0, which technically has the available bandwidth to support something like this, which is rated for read speeds up to 300 megabytes per second. However, this card is not UHS2 compatible, which is why when I plugged in my fancy new SD cards, I was getting the same 80-ish megabytes per second reads off of it as I was off of these SD cards. So for those of you who are still with me and haven't dropped out because this is a video about SD cards, do note that you need a UHS-2 compatible SD card reader, and ideally one that supports at least USB 3.2 Gen 1, in order to take advantage of the new standard and the transfer speeds that it provides. I actually have two of these. They're pretty much the same device, but I, I didn't realize Lexar was gonna send me one along with the four SD cards that they sent over, so I went and bought one as well. So now I have two, one for my system out here and one for my computer back in the computer room. Of course, the other thing to consider besides the camera you're using and the recording medium is going to be price. And price is definitely going to be a factor for you if you're considering these SD cards. A 256 gig model costs $250. And whereas five or 10 years ago, that was like, wow, that's a great price. Do note that there are other SD cards that are slightly less fast that have uh, read and write speeds that are closer to the 90 megabytes per second that you can usually find for maybe 30 to $60. And that's a lot less than these newer Lexar 2000 X cards. So you need to be considering how much time you're actually going to be spending writing data to the card, and that's usually not as much of a concern, because it's usually going to be written to at the speed that your camera can write to, and it's usually copying the data off the card that you might have to sit around and wait for. And of course you could do other things while you're copying data off of your SD cards. It's not like it's completely compromising your time and energy while you're doing that. But let's get into our testing. First of all, I've already determined that you definitely do want to use a UHS-2 compatible card reader in order to get the most out of these cards. If you don't, you'll be severely limiting the speed of these cards. So I used this Lexar Professional Multi 3-in-1 card reader, and I connected it to this test bed, which is using an Intel 12900K and an MSI Z690 Unify motherboard. And it's pretty much the, one of the latest systems that you can put together. And it has full support for 10 gigabit USB 3.2 Gen 2. 
so plenty of bandwidth for our needs. To further clarify our testing, I also installed a standalone 500 gig M.2 NVMe SSD, which I believe is a Samsung 960 Evo in there. So we are copying the data to a drive that's not the operating system drive. It's not being used for anything else except writing that 20 gigs of data that we are reading from the SD card. And here are the results. My Samsung Evo Select, which according to Samsung's website is rated up to 100 megabytes per second, reads off of the drive, peaked at 91 megabytes per second, taking three minutes and 49 seconds to copy that 20 gigs of data, which is mixed video files, basically the video files that I would typically have after a completed project. Just cut down to 20 gigs so we could run these tests a little bit faster, but you can of course extrapolate that to 40 gigs, 60 gigs, or 100 gigs, just do these numbers times five. But 20 gigs divided by three minutes and 49 seconds is an average of about 87.3 megabytes per second. The SanDisk Extreme card, which is actually, according to the spec sheet, rated a little bit slower than this card at 90 megabytes per second, reads actually was a little bit faster. It hit 91.7 megabytes per second peak, took three seconds less, three minutes and 46 seconds to copy the 20 gigs of data for an average of about 88.5 megabytes per second. And then we switched to the Lexar Professional 2000X 256 gig, $250 SD card. And the results were uh, not quite 300 megabytes per second, unfortunately. There is a big difference between theoretical speeds and real world speeds. And there's lots of contributing factors, including the type of data that you're copying and the size of the data and whether it's little files, whether it's big files. But the peak speed was 217 megabytes per second. The time it took was one minute and 37 seconds for an average of 206.2 megabytes per second. Significantly faster than my existing cards for sure. Unfortunately, also a bit disappointing in that it's slower than the advertised 300 megabytes per second read speeds off of these cards. But to bring this all back to the original reason I asked Lexar for these cards and why I'm making this video in general is typically at the end of a shooting day, whenever Joe comes and helps me shoot video, we take the SD cards, we copy the data onto the system over here, and then we copy the data onto Joe's external drive that he brings home to edit. So that means we have like 15 to 25 minutes of just sitting here waiting for that stuff to copy before Joe can head home. You know, we have to sit and make awkward conversation, you know, like figure out what that smell is. <laughs> so obviously we, we want to minimize is the amount of time that we're forced to be in each other's presence and awkward pauses and all that stuff. And the upshot here, if I extrapolate the 20 gigs out to being about 100 gigs of footage, which is what we often have after a day long shoot, that would be about 18.8 .8 minutes to copy off of even the faster of the drives that uh, we tested today, the SanDisk Extreme, versus eight minutes uh, with the new Lexar 2000X cards. So that's a difference of about 10 minutes every time we're gonna copy 100 gigs or so of data off of one of these SD cards. And I shoot enough video and I do that often enough that it made sense to get these cards to take advantage of the faster speeds, save a little bit of time. I think that's going to add up over time. Joe's here while I'm shooting this video as well, by the way. I thought it would be appropriate if he was here for this one. He also pointed out sometimes we go to trade shows where we're trying to shoot a video and get it copied and edit it very quickly. So that is time saved, time is money. So therefore these SD cards are obviously worth money. Whether or not they're worth 250 bucks each to you is subjective, of course. So you're gonna have to make that determination yourself. Either way, I'll post links to these SD cards down in the video's description. I wanna say a huge thank you to Lexar for sending these over. I think they'll be very helpful as we continue to shoot video. Maybe I'll even start shooting 4K 60 videos instead of 4K 30. That, that could be something that I could do to take advantage of the speed of these new cards. But I know this is a different video than I typically do, talking a little bit more about the video production side than the PC building side of my content. So let me know what you think. I'd be happy to hear that in the comment section down below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, you can hit the thumbs up button. You can subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one in the future. And you can also check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses, beer sets, and more. It's great stuff over there, so I highly recommend it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm going to copy all this footage from the other Lexar SD card onto the computer, and then Joe's gonna take it home to edit. That's gonna happen much faster this time. So we'll see you guys all in the next video.